Oh my god, just look at what's happening. A rocket booster is landing vertically on the ocean, soft and controlled. But wait, that's not SpaceX's super heavy. It's a booster being tested in China, and it's mimicking everything Starship can do, seemingly accelerating its pace to catch up with SpaceX. So, where exactly are China's rockets on their strategy of stealing U.S. technology? Could it be that one day, a Chinese mini Starship might reach orbit before the real Starship even gets there? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. While SpaceX's ninth Starship test flight recently ended with both the booster and upper stage being lost due to technical issues, halfway across the world, another space power was quietly making its own moves. China, already known as the world's manufacturing giant, has been keeping a close eye on SpaceX's progress. And it's not just watching. It's building, testing, and aiming to replicate what the American company has achieved. In recent years, China has gained a reputation not only for mass production, but also for its ability to closely study and replicate advanced technologies. From consumer goods to high-end electronics, that Made in China label is practically everywhere. Now, that same drive is extending into aerospace. But replicating rockets isn't as simple as copying a smartphone or a home appliance. Rocket science, quite literally, is one of the most complex fields in engineering, and so far, no Chinese rocket company has managed to create a true counterpart to SpaceX's Starship. Still, the ambition is clearly there. A new player has recently entered the scene, a young private startup called Space Epoch. Although relatively unknown and lacking major public achievements, the company has just made headlines with a video showing one of its boosters performing a vertical landing test at sea. The footage shows a rocket descending in a controlled, upright position, strikingly similar to the early landing tests of SpaceX's Super Heavy booster. As the rocket approaches the water, it reignites its engines, slowing its fall and carefully maneuvering itself for a soft splash down. The key moment hovering above the water, using active thrust to stabilize, and descending vertically, was. The test ended with the rocket standing briefly on the ocean's surface before eventually tipping over and exploding in a fiery red flash. This isn't just a spectacle, it's a serious milestone. The test was likely conducted close to shore, meaning the company may be able to recover parts of the rocket and analyze the data to refine its technology. If this sounds familiar, it's because it is. SpaceX has been doing these kinds of water landings for years, using them as stepping stones toward building fully reusable rockets. Space Epoch's recent test mirrors that exact strategy, hinting that the company may be working toward its own version of a mini Starship. While China has not yet produced a working equivalent to SpaceX's Starship, companies like Space Epoch are clearly studying every move. And if their rapid progress continues, we may very well see a competitive new era of private spaceflight emerging from China. However, copying Starship is no simple feat. While Space Epoch has made a significant leap forward in its development journey, it's important to remember that many other rocket companies in China have also attempted similar feats often with disastrous results. Several have faced large explosions that affected nearby residential areas and caused severe environmental damage. Yet in the world of space tech, the market is a battlefield. And that's exactly why numerous companies continue to follow in SpaceX's footsteps, undeterred by the risks. One standout example is Cosmo Liap, a startup founded in early 2024. The company has announced that it successfully raised over 100 million yuan, around 14 million USD, to fund the development of its reusable rocket, Yuekian, and its recovery system. The concept video of Yuekian in action bears a striking resemblance to SpaceX's Starship. Watching Yuekian descend from the sky only to be caught mid-air by a pair of mechanical chopstick arms evokes a powerful sense of deja vu. The similarities are uncanny, and it's clear that Cosmo Layap has drawn heavy inspiration from SpaceX's pioneering designs. Another company, Deep Blue Aerospace, has set its sights on developing reusable rockets similar to SpaceX's Falcon 9. In 2024, the company tested its Nebula 1 rocket, achieving controlled hovering and high-altitude landing capabilities, an achievement reminiscent of SpaceX's early Grasshopper and Starship test campaigns. Their focus on methalox engines, methane and liquid oxygen, 
and vertical landing technology aligns closely with SpaceX's reusable rocket philosophy. That said, their development is still in its early stages compared to SpaceX's rapid pace. Of course, we can't overlook Space Pioneer, which is currently developing Tianlong-3, a reusable rocket designed to compete with the Falcon 9 in terms of both payload capacity and cost efficiency. Scheduled for launch in 2025, Tianlong-3 is aiming for vertical landing capabilities, a technique that SpaceX perfected with its first successful Falcon 9 booster landing back in 2015. The company's rapid progress and focus on large-scale launch vehicles demonstrate its ambition to challenge SpaceX's market dominance. Another notable contender is iSpace. Earlier this year, the company secured funding worth hundreds of millions of yuan, allowing it to move full steam ahead with projects like Hyperbola 3, a next-generation reusable launch vehicle inspired by SpaceX's Falcon 9 achievements iSpace is targeting several key milestones for Hyperbola 3, including its first orbital launch and sea recovery by December 2025, followed by a reusable test flight in June 2026. Beyond the rocket race, China is also ramping up its efforts in deep space exploration. Most recently, the country launched its second planetary exploration mission, Tianwen-2, to collect samples from a near-Earth asteroid and later survey a main belt comet. This mission marks another bold step in China's expanding space ambitions. Tianwen-2 lifted off on a Long March 3B rocket at 1.31 p.m. Eastern, 1731, UTC, from Xichang Satellite Launch Center, southwest China, climbing into the night sky above the spaceport. The China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation, CASC, announced the successful launch of Tianwen-2 just over an hour after liftoff. Tianwen-2 is now in a transfer orbit, headed for the 40 to 100 meter diameter near-Earth asteroid 469219, Kamo Oalewa, 2016, HO3. It is expected to rendezvous with a small, rocky body around July 2026 spending seven months studying the near-Earth object and collecting samples. The samples are expected to be returned to Earth in late 2027. Analysis of the samples aims to reveal the nature and origin of the asteroid, which is possibly a piece of the moon blasted into space following an impact event, analyze its mineral content, and provide valuable comparisons with other asteroids. Tianwen-2 will release a re-entry module containing the samples on return to the Earth but this will not be the end of the mission. The main spacecraft will use the Earth for gravitational swing B, setting it on course for a six-year voyage to Comet 311-P-P-A-N-S-T-A-R-R-S. -R -R the asteroid and comet mission will provide China with a range of experience and expertise in mission design and operations, such as advancing spacecraft autonomy, navigation, planning orbits, and sampling technologies in extremely challenging environments. Franco Perez Lisi, Ramsey's mission. Systems engineer at the European Space Agency, ESA, told Space News, while China has conducted two lunar sample return missions, including the moon's far side, approaching and orbiting these small objects will bring new challenges in terms of rendezvous, approach, and sampling. These bodies have extremely weak and irregular gravity fields, Perez Lisi said, referring to asteroids and comets. So, we cannot rely on traditional orbiting like we do around the planet. Tianwen-2 will need to fly in carefully planned trajectories to maneuver around and study the asteroid, as well as match its speed and rotation for sampling. It's like trying to dock a boat with a mountain floating in space and tumbling really unpredictably and with almost no gravity. So landing, or even just flying close, requires extreme precision, greater autonomy, and careful planning, Perez Lisi said. The science and data return will also be of great value, with Perez Lisi noting that past missions such as Rosetta, Hayabusa 2, and OSIRIS-REx showed that in situ measurements or return samples can contain organic molecules, amino acids, and nucleobases, potential ingredients for life. Tianwen-2 joins a number of international efforts that contribute to shared scientific and planetary defense knowledge, notably ESA missions Ramses and Hera, NASA's DART, and OSIRIS-REx Apex missions, 
and JAXA's Hayabusa series in Destiny Plus. It's always very positive that more and more people are venturing into asteroid missions. It may well be helpful for the future, since we are engaging in planetary defense, but also, it's extremely interesting for science and to understand our origins. The mission follows the successful Tianwen-1 Mars Orbiter and Rover mission launched in 2020 and will be followed by ambitious Mars sample return, Tianwen-3, and Jupiter system, Tianwen-4, missions later in the decade. Tianwen-2 aims to advance China's planetary exploration capabilities and deepen our understanding of small planetary bodies and their evolution. It could also contribute to planetary defense and shed light on the origins of life. The missions are also part of a wider planetary exploration roadmap focused on astrobiology and habitability and a long-term plan for space science, including a Venus sample return mission, the International Lunar Research Station, ILRS, and searching for habitable exoplanets. The spacecraft will attempt up to three methods of sampling, hover sampling, collecting samples with a robotic arm while matching the asteroid's rotation, touch and go, tag, using a rotating brush head, and anchored sampling in which landing legs would use drills at the end of landing legs to press into the asteroid if the surface composition and terrain allow. The tag approach was used by both NASA's OSIRIS-REx and JAXA's Hayabusa-2. China has released few official detailed plans for the mission. Early proposals for the mission, then named Zheng He, after the Chinese admiral and explorer born in the 14th century, indicated the mission would aim to collect between 200 and 1,000 grams of samples. Chinese scientists have called for a strategic focus on asteroid missions, which could contribute to overall unlay the groundwork for future space resource utilization and planetary defense. The comet phase of the mission will also be a test in terms of the longevity of the spacecraft. With arrival at 311P slash PANSTARRS expected around 2035, a decade after liftoff, the target comet is seen as an ideal target for studying transitional objects between asteroids and comets, orbiting between 1.94 and 2.44 astronomical units from the Sun. It will also allow China's engineers and scientists to test themselves against some of the toughest problems in terms of planetary science and defense and potentially resource utilization.